I was actually in self-quarantine before the lockdown started. The hardest part really is physical contact, especially when you have your low days and you're feeling like, oh man, I just need a hug right now. Getty Images. Someone sent me a meme of Evita with her arms up with the caption, don't cry for me, Quarantina. And the idea just popped into my mind that just like Eva Peron on the balcony of the Casa Rosada, I had to sing Don't Cry For Me, Quarantina on my balcony to my neighbors. And off I went to my balcony and I just started singing. And then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on. I had so much fun and I could feel the energy from just across the way and how much people were enjoying it and we just hit sea point like in a massive way. Run away, they say, cause no one will love you as you are. I'm just so thankful that I could bring some joy and some light and some hope to you during these, oh, during these trying times. I was born and raised in Cape Town, actually in this very neighborhood of Sea Point. I had a passion for music at a very young age. When I was 10 years old, I auditioned for the musical Evita and I got in and played one of the children's roles. And I knew at that point that this is what I was meant to do for the rest of my life. Many nights we pray with no proof anyone could hear. When I finished school, I was hungry to go overseas. So I sang on a cruise ship. I ended up being cast as one of the leads in the musical Evita. And in 2019, we did a 10 city tour of China, which was amazing. I was actually in Wuhan in September, can you believe it? Where the supposed coronavirus broke out. At the end of my tour, we were finishing our last stop in Guangzhou and I found a lump in my breast. got diagnosed with stage two breast cancer. It was grade three, it was aggressive. And weeks went by with numerous tests and I found out that I had the BRCA2 gene. It prevents you from getting breast cancer. In my case, because the gene is mutated, I'm at 80% higher risk of getting breast cancer and ovarian cancer. I knew that by having the BRCA gene, I would have to have a double mastectomy. But even more frightening was losing my hair. And it was the craziest thing because as soon as I did it, I felt so liberated. I moved through that fear, it was gone. You know, for so long, I put so much emphasis of, on external validation of always looking well-groomed. You know, I had to have my hair blow-dried and my face on and Danielle Beaton, the singer, the performer. You know, we do that as entertainers. And now I've been stripped of everything. I've been stripped of my breasts. My hair is gone and I've learned the true meaning of loving myself from a deeper level and you know that what comes from the inside is really so much more important. I've been home since January recovering from surgeries so it, it didn't come as much of a shock to me although I must say that I really enjoyed going for walks with my dog and getting out a bit and going to the Greenpoint Park, which was my sanctuary, being around the ones I'd love and hugging them and that's been challenging. In the beginning of this, I was so anxious. I mean, I was consumed. I was watching the news every single day. As you know, it can just stress and anxiety can, can just break your immune system down. So I decided I had to stop that. I had to focus on my well-being. I meditate every day to stay calm and centered. I bought some canvases and uh, I do love to paint. Musically, I, I, I get lost in that. I've managed to set up a little home studio and um, I DJ. I keep myself occupied and I'm grateful for the days when I have the energy to do that. Well, 
I believe that this coronavirus is a global pandemic, but more so we are experiencing this as a collective trauma. You know, our world as we know it is no longer the same. And we've seen so many incredible acts of positivity and kindness in our country and community, people giving back. I've never been so proud to be part of the human race as I am now, because you just see how much people are connected to each other and giving to one another and it's truly remarkable. So I urge all of you to just have faith, have hope, reach out to one another and stay safe.